What's up guys, Blue Hawk here, and today we're going to be talking about the best possible design for a Industrial Craft 2 nuclear reactor, or, or at least I consider it the best, because it is one that can uh, basically infinitely run as long as it's supplied with coolant cells, and uh, it also produces about 1200 EU per second, uh, which is quite good. So let's get into it right here we have our nuclear reactor which you obviously probably know how to make and we have uh, here the components we're going to be using so let's start off here you're going to need six quad plutonium cells which you get from double plutonium cells which you get from a single plutonium cell which you get from either centrifuging the re uranium cells or the uranium dust next up we have our heat exchangers um, I think you're gonna need about 20 of these and these are made like so with n heat normal heat exchangers and uh, electric circuits and some glass fiber cables and the normal heat exchangers are made like so next is up is our heat vent you're also gonna need around 20 of these and these are advanced heat vents which are made with a diamond some iron bars and heat vents and these are made with either aluminum or with refined iron next up we have an NAK coolant cells 360k and these are made like so from these which are made like so which are made from potas from sodium potassium tin and uh, 10k coolant cells and uh, nextly is our 360k coolant helium cells which are made like so like so and then from a single helium cell which is made from either centrifuging glowstone dust or endstone dust and finally we have our fail safe in case these two have died off and you have not turned on off the reactor we have our regular 60k coolant cells which are made by 30k coolant cells 10k coolant cells which are made of water capsules water bottles water cells etc so let us get started here first of all we want my quad uranium cells or rather quad plutonium cells and we want to place them around the middle of this reactor like so and we want to take our heat exchangers and we want to place them in this fashion now what the heat exchanger is used for is they transfer the heat out of the outside of the reactor so that none of the heat is trapped inside and uh, it can all be dispersed and cooled by the air I'm going to put these back, I took a little bit too many next up we're going to take our heat vents now what the heat vents are used for, they transfer the air inside of the reactor and they're going to be transferring the air, uh, the hot air to our advanced heat exchangers which will be, like I said, pushing it out of the reactor and you want to place them in this fashion which is the exact opposite of how we placed our heat exchangers or yeah heat exchangers uh, next up is our NK coolant cells you're gonna need about three of these and these are gonna be placed uh, like so excuse me these go like here I'm sorry and you're gonna actually need a couple more NK coolant cells place them like so and in this way all the heat is transferred inside to these guys and these guys are fail safes again and these guy, this guy takes all the heat from here and disperses it here and here next up is our helium cells you're going to need uh, I'd say about 10 of these guys and you want to place them around your plutonium cells and these are going to be taking up most of the heat from the plutonium cells along with the NK coolant cells and this is how you place those and last uh, but not least our fail safe the 60k coolant cells you wanna fill up all of the rest of the spots with the 60k coolant cells so in this way the plutonium cells will be producing heat around themselves to this guy these two guys and the helium cells and uh, these cells will be used up now these cells will last about five or six hours before they're all used up and then it will go to our fail safe now these cells will last about 15 minutes or so before the reactor blows 
and uh, basically destroys your base. So if these cells have died, you immediately need to turn off your reactor because there's a good chance it will explode. Then any of the excess heat from these guys, as much as possible, will move to the heat vents, which will move it to the heat exchangers, which will be moved to the air, and the air will then cool it. Next up, what you need is your HV cables and any sort of energy storage unit. Now, if you plan on using an MFSU, uh, you will probably need to use a HV transformer. Now I'm using an adjustable energy storage unit from the GregTech mod just because that holds uh, a fairly uh, large amount of EU. It holds uh, 100 million and so it is a good good thing to use. Now it is fairly expensive to make but I'm not gonna get into these now. That is something for another video. But I'm going to show you how this works. Uh, you want to place a redstone signal. This will turn it on. As you can see, these plutonium cells are getting uh, used up. And we're getting a very, very, very large amount of energy. Very, very large. We're already at 200,000 EU. And uh, I may have lied at the beginning of the video when I said it was about 1,000 something. Um, apparently, it's uh, 10,000 something. I'm sorry. And uh, as you can see, these cells are getting used up, or starting to get used up, mostly these guys. And this is due to the fact that the plutonium cells are starting to make lots of energy. Now, the way you know that a s reactor is about to blow is there's going to be little parts, particles of smoke coming out. So I'm going to show you that by taking all of these out. As you can see, these smoke particles are starting to appear and the reactor just blew up and this is what could happen to your base if you do not do it properly so it's very important to follow the instructions I have set in this video so that this does not happen to your base because this brings radiation and hunger uh, to about a hundred block radius and this is the hole you're gonna make with just a single reactor so thank you very much for watching. Please aid my warnings. Do not blow up your base. And uh, I'll see you next time.